Hi and welcome to my channel. I'm the Green Thumb Artist, Kayleen, and um, today we're going to do a few jobs out in the garden and bear with me because I stopped, started, stopped, started thinking I had finished showing you things and I keep finding more to show you. So bear with me to the end because there's lots in this video to show you. Um, I'm discovering so many wonderful things over the past only six months of starting my edible food forest uh, in a very eco-friendly way. Um, I, I, look, I'm discovering so many things. There's been challenges, but there's been so many successes, so many um, surprises like you'll see in this video. And uh, at the end of the day, we have got so much more food than, than we ever had months ago and our food bill has dropped to almost nothing for fruit and veggies because we're now um, eating out of the garden um, mostly occasionally buying a little bit from the shop I mean we buy our meat and dairy because we don't have have that here uh, but from a very small early start seeds mainly I have bought some plants and cuttings but but um, mostly seeds and, you know, a bit of mulch, like natural mulch and cardboard. <laughs> it's amazing what you can grow. So that's why I started this channel to encourage um, those, particularly those who are struggling um, with um, the situation as it is and food shortages and, and um, different scenarios that might affect, affect the way you eat and and mainly um, to improve our soil and get more nutrients in us and less chemicals um, this makes a big difference so come with me today and um, see what my jobs are on for just today <laughs> there's a bit to show you okay oh what's in there oh it's just my socks <laughs> I always worry about spiders being in the boots. <laughs> nope, socks. <laughs> Start again. Okay. <laughs> so the jobs today, I've got my secateurs. I've got to do a little, a few jobs with those. I've cleaned them with the rubbing alcohol to make sure they're all clean. We need to harvest what's out there, stop the birds getting them, and do a few, just a few maintenance jobs. Okay, so I may have to vo voice over this one because the neighbours just decided to mow their lawns as I'm filming. That's the way it goes, isn't it? But I haven't got time to wait, so on with it. I've had to do this a few times during the growing season. My apple, it's a, a grafted apple that's got two varieties on it. Um, and the suckers keep coming up from the base. So I need to chop them off. My apples are nearly ready. Um, they're not huge, but they were just decent size. But my problem is, even though I've got like this netted cage here for them, the birds still get in. Um, I haven't angered it down. There's a few little spots where they, you know, get in under the, under there and under the netting, and. Bit by bit, they've been taking my apples out. You can see up here, um, munch, munch. So I don't have a lot of apples to pick left, so I'm going to pick them. And then I can remove the cage and open up this space. And I'm going to use the frame here as a growing frame. For climbing vegetables.
quite a few in here. Now, <clears throat> that's a daisy. I'm not, not sure what else is in that because I've lost my tag. Um, I've got the grass coming in too. But look, look at those. There's quite a few of them. And I'm going to have to mulch because they've really gone to town in here. Now in here I have one solitary garlic that grew and it's starting to die back so it's almost ready to, to pull out. I probably could pull it out. In fact, I probably might. I might actually. Let's not pull it out. Now because it's not going to be stored, I'm not too worried. I'm trying to gently coax it out. It's only going to be a little. There it is. So it's not, it's not um, tiny but it's not, not big either. Now because this has been grown in my garden it's the only one I really got to grow. I'm still going to keep it and I'm going to try growing from the clothes that's in it because I was told that Part of the success is climatizing your plants to your garden. And um, this one's managed to succeed where the other ones didn't. So I'm going to take a punt on this one little plant, divide it up and see if it will grow on next year and better. So we'll put that over there. Now I used this understory for the pots during the heat. We've had a bout of heat and then it went cool again. It's mild now, it's nice actually, but we will get heat again. So under here has protected the little pots and it's, um, it's kind of added a bit of protection for the violets that were in the ground under here and things are looking pretty happy. Uh, but in amongst it, I've got some peppermint here. Um, you'll see when I pull it, it's going to, it's got, it's rooting into the ground. Um, I don't think that will go nuts because of it, but it is rooting into the ground, acting like a garden. And we've got another sucker here to get rid of. So we'll cut that out too. Okay, so while we're away over the Christmas break, a lot got away from me. Uh, in that burst of heat and rain, we had, um, and, and my, my garden was being watered well, which was great, but when we got that heat, we had a, you know, the incoming, the weeds, the grass weeds in particular. So when I came back, there was a lot of weeding to, to be done and um, a lot of maintenance. And, and it was hot. So um, what I've tried to do and what I do find is helpful um, because the garden can be, like the bigger your garden gets, the more there is to do. And if you're kind of working a bit here and a bit there, it feels like you're not making any progress. So I try to work in a section, much like cleaning a, a room in your house and clean that room, get that room done and, and feel like that is actually taken care of. So when I'm working a section like this, um, I've removed the suckers on the tree, but I'm gonna look at all the little jobs around that small area to do. So, um, and then you kind of walk away feeling like that whole thing is taken care of and is is safe for a while. It, it's, um, you don't have to worry about it. So here's some of the things that I can see while I'm down here. Take a look. Okay, so there's a few things. So I've got some I've got some pots that have been placed under the tree here while they get going. I've got some kale here. This is this is um, been attacked by the um, caterpillars. We've had like almost like a plague of white cabbage moth here um, 
in Melbourne and they've been everywhere. They're slowing up now, I think, but they've been everywhere and they've been laying their eggs and everything. Now I did have this uncovered and then I covered it just loosely with some netting under this netting. Um, this netting, it's like a tent. I've used a pergola frame and covered it. But on one side of it, there is wire which they can get through. So I loosely covered this with netting to try and keep them down uh, while I was away in that. And when I come back, I've been squashing, <coughs> squashing eggs and so forth and letting the plant uh, just battle. Um, they're okay, they're, they're, they are eaten, but they, they will be okay. Um, and also you'll see all this white stuff on the plants here. That's just flour. I used to use this years ago, apparently cooking flour, like your self-raising flour or your plain flour. Um, apparently it's a stomach poison to, to um, caterpillars. So, so I've just dusted that. That seems to have slowed them down. And then I found um, I thought some of the, something's still eating it and I can't see any caterpillars so I lifted up the pots the other day and found more slugs. So I think it's been more of a slug issue which I've done that a couple of days and there doesn't seem to be any more slugs here, big slugs, um, so they may recover. So that's just those. I'm not going to do much to them at all but we've got a little tomato that's grown in this pot too. Um, and what I've been doing with my tomatoes, whenever I've seen any yellowing of the branches, I cut them off. That gives the plant air and, um, and it focuses on growing. So same with, there is a leaf here from the kale. I'm, I'm removing that as well because it's yellow and that can all go in the compost. Okay, so I've done that with my tomato plants, with my big ones. This is just a little baby compared to the tomato plants that are out there in the rest of my garden. Um, and the plant, plants are amazing. They, this, the tomatoes know which, they, when they start to yellow, I've noticed that they're always the branches they don't need anymore. And um, the plant needs its leaves to photosynthesize and feed, you know, give energy to the plant. But it knows which ones it doesn't need. And it's almost like if you watch it closely, you you know where to prune. So some people don't prune their pla um, tomatoes, but I found um, it was good. I didn't get any of that powdery mildew that a lot of people were getting on their tomatoes. Okay, um, now the comfrey. These were just little cuttings that I bought only a few months ago. Put them around the garden, particularly under a fruit tree there to feed the fruit tree. And the leaves are probably one of the best manures you can have for your, leaf, for your garden. So look at these big leaves that this is throwing out. So I'm going to cut a few of the leaves. And I'm going to use those, I'll chop them up and I'm going to put them just under the mulch on a few plants that seem to be struggling a little. So obviously their soil is not, um, it hasn't settled because this is a fairly new garden um, or the microbes haven't, you know, just kicked in or that needs a little something. So I could put this in and make it a weed tea, which I will, I have put some in my weed tea um, but I will do it that way with these two leaves so I'll pop them over there now this here is um, known as New Zealand spinach or warrigal spinach it's a perennial you eat the leaves um, we cook them because all spinaches have um, oxalic acid and too much of it is not good for you so we cook the leaves this one's going to flower. You can see the yellow flowers on it or starting to flower. However, we've still been picking and eating the leaves even though it's in that state. Um, it grows really well when it gets a nice spot. Um, it can be, it can grow exceptionally well and you've got to watch it. But when I harvest it, I just cut the whole branch back, 
paper in it like I won't leave that one I'll just get one from the path uh, from the edge of the garden and I take a whole section out like that which is pretty much like full of cuttings too if you want to take cuttings at the same time and I take the leaves from those so I'll, I'll just harvest those um, and I'm just remo removing a bit from here because it's reaching out beyond the edge of this garden bed and my husband's been very careful when he mowed not to mow mow over it but as a result too the grass is still um the grass has not been mowed either and it's trying to grow into the garden so I'll need to weed the very edge of the garden bed so I'll cut all of them I can take them inside we can eat them and like I'll pick all the leaves off and um, I can even offer up the cuttings to people who want cuttings to grow their own and you'll see it's been a very generous plant already so that's that done just a few minutes it's pretty much cleaned up this garden bed and I just have to get in here with the gloves and pull out the grasses that have tried to grow here but because there's so much growing here it hasn't had a lot of success because the more you've got on the ground growing that's not weeds the less weeds you have so there's a few more um, jobs in here I've got some lettuce seedlings that probably would be better off elsewhere so I'll plant them out um, there's a couple of pots there that I don't think they're, <laughs> they're gonna grow that was um, an attempt at turmeric um, and it just didn't grow so um, and I need to plant out this poor avocado tree that's uh, way too big for its pot now um, it's not that old but it needs to needs to be planted out I've got some gear to do that now and these seedlings didn't grow by the looks so I just need to clean up here so that's sitting in water so there's no way that's gonna grow that's shouldn't have been I shouldn't have done that actually see so they, they'll, they'll just rot in situ they will um, this this one's just starting to ripen this tomato and Again, I'll just remove a few of these leaves as well. Beautiful basil. Look at that. That's cinnamon basil, guys. It's just absolutely pretty as. And the, I'll pick some of that lemon uh, balm, which I absolutely adore in salads. And I'll get this tree picked and we'll see how much I did end up getting out of all that was sacrificed to the birds and we'll take it inside and have a look at today's harvest I'm harvesting something every day from this pretty young garden this tree's been in a couple of years but there wasn't much here six months ago um, and there's a lot a lot more here now and I've got this most beautiful colorful rainbow corn in there that needs to be picked too today wow the birds really did get a lot <laughs> So, so I've come out here every day and pulled a couple more off, a couple more off. Um, so I reckon the birds probably got twice as much as we did. However, last year they got them all and the year before there was no apples because it's a young tree. So <laughs> we've made progress. Um, this is what I've done. So the well-eaten apples I um, will end up in the compost and the ones that eaten a little like this one 
I'm going to cut that piece off and still use the apple because a saying that rings through my ears is waste not, want not. That's what a saying that my mother used to say. Um, my mum's still with me, but that was the saying, waste not, want not. And it's so true. Why waste it when you can eat it? So there's about half a dozen like that. And then the rest are fine. And that's what we got this year. So, you know, it's progress. And in saying that, I probably should have netted better, which is something I'll do next year. And also, I didn't thin them out. I should have thinned them out more and allowed those apples to get bigger. Um, you know, <laughs> when, you, when you're first growing, it's, it's like, oh, I want to keep all my apples. And the apple tree dropped a lot itself. It just dropped tons of little apples in the early stages. So it wanted me to thin it out. Um, but I resisted thinning it out too much. But I, if I had, those apples would probably be a lot bigger. There's some, some in that, that are probably almost shop size or pretty close to it. Pretty, pretty good. But obviously there, there's some little ones in there too. So, but you know, it's food we didn't have. So I'll pop all that spinach in the basket too. Let's, let's take the weed out. We don't want that. And I'll um, pick that all inside for now. Just pop them in there. And there's probably a little bit more here right near the path that I could take as well, I think. I'll take that and that going out onto the path and then I could see the weeds they can't hide anymore and get in there with the gloves and pull that, that out so even this little small section there's a bit to do and um, I could be we could harvest and eat that too oh look how did that get in there Oh my goodness, that has popped out of the pot. I've tried to grow ginger in the pot, but no, <laughs> this is the new way. Let it fall out of the pot and there you go. I do have ginger, I'm going to have to do something with that. Yay! <laughs> and this is my corn. Um, it was grown in a bed where we didn't have this wire cage on it initially. Uh, long story, but anyhow, the wire cage is not um, tall enough for it, so it's reached the roof and then struggled or poking through the roof. But anyhow, we got I've got corn on it, um, but the aphids have have moved in as well. Uh, we do have ladybirds that have moved in and hoverflies, so there's a there's um, a bit going on on with the aphids. But we've got the the one that struggled the most full of aphid so i need to get the corn off um see there you go look there's a little can you see there's not just the aphids on there there was a red ladybirds on here too um there's different ones that do different things that we've got a yellow one that likes powdery mildew so seen a few of those and I've got this corn here <laughs> that has mutated it's got like three tassels like <laughs> is that and it's huge so it's almost like there's more than one in there it's like a triplet <laughs> so that's probably not going to grow though because the tops are finished pollinating so that's probably not going to grow but I need to harvest these they're only fairly small but they are the most beautiful colorful corn you've ever seen so let's get them off need two hands for this
Okay, my friends, this is my situation. They're not ready. I did pick some the other day. They were bright and colorful. They were ready, but a lot of these are not ready. So my situation is we've got a lot of aphids. I've got predatory insects in here that want to eat those aphids, but there's a lot of them. Uh, but my corn's not ready and they could be destroyed by the aphids or saved by the predators. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the hose and rinse off as many aphids as I can. I'm going to let my gr corn grow on and hope these little guys help me with the rest. And I can just see one now. So they're here. They'll be laying eggs and when those eggs hatch, they will be eating the aphids in droves. Now this is my weed bin from the other day. It's this horrible grass that was growing through all over there. They'll be removed. But you can see with the corn, you can start to see the colours. That's not as colourful as the corn I picked the other day. That's not ready. That's not ready, and that's certainly far from ready, even though the top was browned. Um, and even the, the outside was brown, but not green like this. But see, we've got pests. So I'm gonna try naturally to reduce the numbers, let the predators do their thing, and hope for the best, because really, um, picking them like this is not going to give us food or um, the decoration I was actually after for my paintings. So we will press on. And in the meantime, now I've weeded under there. Uh, there wasn't a lot of weeds under the corn, but there were still weeds, so they're all gone. I will plant some bean seeds, um, things that can use the corn stalks to grow up uh, after I chop it back. And I might even head them and take the tops off because the tops will be using energy. You can see, look, they'll be using energy. The seeds up there, um, instead of the energy going to these cobs. And I've never grown corn before. So it's all new. It's all an experiment. Um, it's all fun. And I'm not going to worry about having a massive harvest. I'm more focused on learning what grows well in my garden, how it behaves, what I need to do to nurture it, and, you know, operate like that. Just work out um, plants that may be best not grown or um, needs to be looked after a certain way. And, um, you know, in, 12 months from now, we're only six months in, 12 months from now, um, it might be a completely different story with the corn. But if it's not, I'll have something else in its place. And um, actually, I was only gonna grow that for the decoration anyhow, so once I've got that, that's fine. Um, I'll probably go sweet corn next to eat. Uh, but that was a bit of a luxury item. So, so but that's the idea. Uh, I see people really panic about a single leaf that goes yellow or that. It's not, it's about enjoying the process for me. Um, and, and most of this started by seed. You're only losing a seed and a bit of time um, if something dies on you. So, you know, just have a play and experiment is my theory. And you do discover things along the way. Like this bed was the first bed, no dig bed didn't do much other than lay cardboard mulch down through a bit of um, um, chook, chook poo pallets over it. And, but it's the oldest bed. And this bed compared to that bed is notably different three months apart. This is amaranth growing about, I don't know, four and a half feet high. And I can walk you over here and show you a much younger bed and that's amaranth there that's struggled and has gone to flower. Um, and it's, what, a foot and a half high? Uh, it was planted later, but there's a notable difference in the beds, um, depending on how long they've had 
to settle in and all the microorganisms to move in, the worms to move in and start working their magic. Out there I'm learning what not to do for weeds and what to do for weeds in here. Trial and error. Some things are not that successful. Well, like this plant that I try to grow two to three times in pots, um, like in the greenhouse and in my garden that's six meters away from this. And then it just pops up in this pot. <laughs> and my comfrey that's happy. There's so many things to celebrate. Oh, like the sun coming up on my tomatoes. And that's what we focus on, my friends. It's getting hot out there. <clears throat> so, I've come in and I'll show you everything we collected, or I collected, um, from that little little garden out back. So, the basket I ended up collecting was so heavy. <laughs> so, so, that's a good sign. Weight in the basket, um, not on the hips. That's what we're looking for. Good food. Okay, so here we go. One plant you must all have is rhubarb. And believe me when I say there's a whole lot of ways you can use rhubarb other than as a dessert in a pie. It's actually in a vegetable, so that will give you a clue. More about that later. So, I went and picked more of the tomatoes. We've got more to the side here. I'll show you there. More tomatoes. And again, if I see some holes in there, as long as there's no grubs inside, they're the tomatoes I use first. Chop the bad bit off and eat the good bit. Uh, and here are our spinach branches, literally, branches. We'll be picking the leaves off all of those. There's plenty more out there, but, um, and we'll, we'll pop that, those ones in the compost. Plenty more out there, but um, that's what we've got today. And our apples. And like I mentioned, I will be getting the ones that have had a bit of a chew by the birds. They're not grubs, they're birds that have had a chew. Um, in saying that, I did hear a creature out in the trees last night. I think the possum's back. Um, I will chop all those off. So there's half a dozen of those. I lost half a dozen to the compost. And the rest are okay. I think what I'll do is I'll pick out the solitary three from one side of the tree that grew, that tree actually struggled with a disease earlier on, which I um, 
did a natural control method to see if it would uh, be okay and it survived but it didn't produce much apples. In saying that, I'm learning pruning. So um, I've got a better idea how to prune the tree from here on in but um, it had my husband prune it just haphazardly initially and then I tried to rectify a bit. So I didn't know if we'd get anything this year, uh, but we did. So we are growing and learning together. But we have apples, so I'll probably stew the little ones. I did try, I had about, I don't know, about 12, I think, have been picked before this um, during the week. And I've tried them and they are sweet, even if they're little. So I think they're probably okay to eat the little ones. Um, but we'll probably stew those up because I do like stewed apples with my oats and a little garlic. So I'll let that dry out um, and see if I can grow the cloves that are in there. So that's just today. Hack attack. Did the ants get to your honey? like they get to ours. My husband loves his honey. We don't have bees, but we buy a lot of honey. Uh, the ants find it. No matter where we put it, the ants find it. So now we've given up trying to put it away. We keep it on the bench, because he uses it every single day. And we just put it in another container of water. They can't cross the moat, so they can't get to the honey. So that's the hack attack for today. We also started picking these. This is um, black eyed peas, which um, is probably not that well known here in Australia at all. I, I hadn't heard about it until I started watching YouTubers and my American friends love them. So I had a packet in the kitchen and I just threw it into the bed just to put nitrogen in the soil. And they've come up and I've started picking the young beans. We've had um, a few to try. And they're nice just like that. I'm actually eating them raw in salads. I haven't cooked them yet, uh, but raw in salads because I eat a lot of salad. And the walking Egyptian onion, I, I cut just a little bit off the tops every day and use them because I love onion, like a spring onion. I use it like a spring onion. And they're actually um, finishing. They're starting to dry off. They've grown the little tops on them. I've plant, I've been planting the tops and eating the top, some of them. Just I wanted to try all those things, so I've eaten some. They're really nice. Planted some to make more. And the actual bulbs themselves, mult, all of them multiplied into at least three. Like one turned into three or four. Um, so they're all die, starting to die off now. So they're like the garlic. I think they're ready to pull up soon if I want to divide them. Uh, my understanding is you can leave them in being Melbourne and it gets pretty wet uh, in the colder months. I'm a bit sketchy on that. I'm just thinking I might be best to pull them up, dry them out a bit, spin them up and plant them out and um, look up where I planted the last, when I planted the last lot, which I think was August that I planted them. So it's nowhere near August. We're only just in Feb. So I might do a bit of research, but if you have the answers, put them in the comments below. If you have the answers for me, save me the researching further, um, that would be great.
Maruva, when I'm in the garden, I chop, because I use it straight away or process it straight away, um, and it's probably a good idea to do it anyhow because the leaves drain the plant if you don't. But um, I chop and end the rhubarb at the same time while I'm outside. Then it's only a matter of giving it a quick rinse because there's no chemicals on it. I don't use anything like that. All it gets is rainwater. So um, I give them a quick, quick rinse and I can chop them up. I wash them when I'm ready to eat. I just pick the leaves by hand. I just pick them off like that. Like that. Because I have plenty, I can choose to leave the ones that have got a few hot lots of holes in them um, because it's not going to be wasted anyhow just goes in the compost i check the under side of the leaves to make sure there's no um creepy crawlies on there or something i may not like to digest under there as i go make sure there's no grass in amongst it um i pick the green ones i don't want yellowing less nutrition just go for what's healthy healthy plant healthy us so this these yellow ones i won't use they can compost and we will just pick the green ones i don't worry if there's a little bit of a tinge to it um, after all this plant is trying to flower like if you try to harvest spinach, regular spinaches, annuals from a flowering plant, ugh, tastes yuck. It's too late. But this bad boy is fine. We keep picking, cut it back so the plant's happy because it's been trimmed back and you can focus on what's left, what you left behind, thicken up instead of getting all leggy and ugly. It stays looking like a healthy, pretty plant, and um, everyone wins. Everyone wins. So I'll continue to go through that, but there are the leaves that will probably half fill that oh and I did pick I picked a few of these the other day they're only new to the calendulas and what I do with these is I have two bowls going because I don't have a heap of it I have two bowls going that one's dry that one's drying and so I'll put this one, these fresh petals in with the drying one on the top. When I think of it, I try to do it every day, but don't get to it. But when I think of it, I give it a bit of a, I just kind of do that. So that it aerates that and that dries when it's definitely dry, put it into there. And then I just grab about a teaspoon of that when I need it and just keep topping up while these the flowering and naturally this bit goes in the compost so I've got my corn in salted water over here soaking make sure we get the aphids all out or kill them I don't want them running through my house <laughs> so, so um, 
and I'll, I'll strip them back and I'll give it a go cooking them even though they're not ready and see. They are, as far as I understand, um, a popping corn, not so much a sweet corn, but they are young, so you never know. So people are asking me, what do they taste like? When they saw these beautiful colored ones, um, they, they said, what do they taste like? And I don't know yet, so <laughs> I'm about to find out. So hopefully they are edible um, because they're picked now. But this is the ones I did the other day and why I thought they're probably ready to pick. See the colours? It's a bit dark in here, but they're really colourful. It's like a rainbow. Now, as it happens, the two cobs that I didn't peel back are quite dark and possibly ready. <clears throat> Although, when you see the colour, now these have been drying for about three days. You see the colour of that, that's much deeper. Now these are drying okay on here. Now some of them haven't, obviously, haven't pollinated all the way. Um, that's rather cute though. These are all, these are for painting. Um, so I'll put them aside, but you can see the difference in the colour between that and that. It's much lighter. So what I'm going to do is I'm still going to I'm tempted to keep this one just for a different colour to put with the others. Um, so yeah, I might do that and just see, because it's all experimenting. So I'll put this with the others, which are a different colour, and it's not because they're dry drying, it's actually the colour they were when I picked them. So I'll let that dry, and we will steam these up later and see. When I first checked them, this is what what I got. So you can see that was obviously nowhere near ready, even as pretty as it was. Um, that is drying or dried almost, I think. I'll just put that with the others that are drying. Um, and you can see the difference between those two. So it's just the different stages. This is what else we made. We made vitamin D for the body when we get out into the sun. Right? I would normally not be out there, but because I've got this garden now, I'm out there all the time. So daily, I'm out there checking and harvesting, so I'm getting the sun. Also, apart from the rhubarb leaves and the ends of the rhubarb that's outside that I've got to put in the compost, there, and that's quite a bit of, bit of compost, there's all this. That's, that's the... Um, the plants that I'm putting back into the soil to feed the plants and to, to look after the soil. So you get all of this produce plus that. Um, honestly guys, I didn't think I'd be able to get much, especially this early, but it all just accumulates, it all just adds up. Um, yes, I've studied heaps in this time and I've put all, Put a lot of work in uh, but I can't say it's been hard it's it's um it's given me so much more than food it's just given me a way of life that I absolutely um it nurtures me in so many different ways so there you go that's just today I hope it bless you and encourages you to sow a seed yourself. So here we are. Now some of those tomatoes were from another day, but the rest are in there to ripen up. They're with their friends. I'll chop that up in a minute or later on today, if it's in water. And all that rhubarb, it's a big bowl, rhubarb, some flower petals for tea. All of this can go into maybe quiche. Maybe we might have quiche omelettes. And this big bowl of spinach. I label it because my family's getting used to these new foods. I label it and I even say cook. So they know to cook it. Now you can eat that raw, but it's best to cook it. And I've separated the apples into the bigger ones and the smaller ones and the ones that those three little apples that come off that one side of the tree 
for us to try. So there you go. I think that's pretty cool. So that's today. That's my jobs today. Now I'm, I need to go back out there at some stage, water the garden when I'm water the, watering the garden um, now that my tank is full again, which is awesome. I could have used town water, but my tank's full. Um, I will go out there and give those aphids a hard time uh, for touching my corn. Thanks for watching. If you're enjoying the videos, I'd like to see more as I journey uh, in my both my YouTube and my um, garden, edible food forest, permaculture kind of um, scenario. As I developed in all those areas, if you'd like to join me and follow, I would love that. And I would love to um, get to know you through the comments. That'd be great. Bye. Happy gardening. Thanks for watching. This is how you water the garden. Ha, 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 ha.